welcome back to Off-Road Gospel. We're getting ready to dive into part two of It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And you may notice that the background that I'm in currently is a little different than the first video. But you'll also notice on some of the questions that I ask, you'll see this again. The reason for that is the camera we were using for uh, the questions had died during the second half of the interview and the panel discussion. So that is the reason for the differences. So I have attempted to get it as close to exactly how it was in the original as I could. So look forward to you joining us. And again, if you have comments, if you have additional resources or, you know, we just hope that this is a blessing to you and we hope that this can be something that can help others who might be struggling or with people who are just trying to help someone they love get through these struggles in their life. So we're going to jump into the remainder of this right now. So along with this, you know, kind of we're talking about some of the things, the do's, the don'ts. What do I look for? What do I, what do we watch for in, in somebody's behavior? You talked about there were certain things you saw that were out of the normal for them in some social media posts with, mm -hmm. uh, with those, with those uh, friends of your daughters. And it's like, what, what do we look for? I mean, we, of course we don't want to be overly, you know, like every little thing, you know, kind of like Robert talked about a little bit ago. But, you know, what are, what are some of those things we should pay attention to? Some of the things I think, and more on the adult side, and, or even in the men's side, is um, abuse of alcohol, drugs. Um, gambling. Gambling, things like that. Those are all signs of somebody struggling with something some mental health issue. Um, so that's one thing, if you see a drastic change in somebody, because I mean, everybody go have a drink for watch a game or whatever, but it's like, if all of a sudden they're drinking a lot more, or they start doing drugs and stuff like that, then you know, they're, they're trying to suppress something. So you, you gotta find out what it is and don't be afraid to ask them. Um, so okay. that's just change in behavior, a drastic change in behavior. If normally as someone is, um, and this is not just in suicidal uh, or people who are having those kind of just mental health. Yeah. If someone is normally a, a happy person that goes about their day this way, or even somebody that is normally a calm, um, I, they have things, their ducks in a row, and you notice a drastic change. Uh, they're short with their their friends, their coworkers, or their just a drastic something different they're no longer the person that you're used to yeah. um, uh, no longer taking care of themselves physically no, not bathing washing their right. hair or maybe doing their makeup or there's a drastic change in their makeup um, same with with men and, and women with you know cutting hair even if they're just not taking care of themselves the way they were yeah. what were you gonna say Jessica um, uh, that was a lot of what I was going to say, but, um, you, you know, just uh, uh, different mood changes, eating, you know, changes if they, you know, go from eating a lot to like nothing, or if they, you know, might eat a lot, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, basically their behavior. Right. You know, a lot of people, they, they might be like, you know, non-social and they're used to being social. You know, if you find them, you know, in their room a lot on their phone, just kind of, you you know, isolated from the rest of the world, and they don't really do a lot of things socially with people. Um, you know, I'm, I I guess it just boils down to behavior. Yeah. Um, you know, just the certain things. Yeah, I mean, I have a neighbor, and um, she she struggles with mental health issues, and I always know when something is going on during the summer because she waters her plants more, not just more. Normally you might water your plants. Let's just say you're out there on this one row for five minutes, right? 
I know when there's something going on because she will water this particular row and she'll be out there for a half an hour. That means that she's <clears throat> thinking a lot harder on something. Right. And then she will spend more time on all of the, the subsequent plants. And then she told me, she says, there's a lot going on right now. You know, when there's a lot going on, I water my plants more. And I, oh, I knew it. Yeah, exactly. I knew something was going on. And, and so just little things like that. And if I hadn't have been in my bedroom looking out the... No, I wasn't. Just <laughs> <laughs> sure. happened to notice. I, I did just happen to notice, you know. And but, <laughs> but, go ahead. Well, it's not just behavior, though. Uh, uh, you know, it might be, you know, things they say like, mm -hmm. like, I really hate my life. Um, I, I don't want to live anymore. Everybody hates me. Um, I, I, I feel everybody would be better if I wasn't here. You, oh, you yeah, know, that's a big one. And, um, you know, just certain things they might say like that. And, you know, kind of going along with social media, there is a lot of that kind of behavior on there. And a lot of people just kind of brush it off, you know, but really just don't. Or feed into it. Yeah. 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 Or feed into it. And, you know, really they're just reaching out. So, you know, if you just notice anything, but yeah, some obvious things like, you know, those things they would say, you know, it seems like something obvious, but a lot of times it's not. So. Yeah. You know, if you just notice something different about somebody, just don't be afraid to, you know, ask them about it, talk to them about it. You know, because uh, you might be the only one they have. You know, and it's not that you have to have all the answers like we discussed, but if you're ever in doubt, just reach out to 988. You can call or text. And if you have any questions, that's an awesome resource. So, yep. you know, if you don't have some professional to go to, that's always a good one. Yep. The final thing I'll add on to that, at least for me, is signs of physical harm. So we talked about physical abuse, yes. maybe not taking yeah. care of themselves. Sometimes one of the most obvious signs is physical harm. You know, you notice marks on their wrists or areas of their body that it doesn't just bump up against the table and scratch you. There's usually some other physical harm signs there depending on, on where they're at. Yeah. And to go along with that, not everybody who does self-harm um, a lot of people that do self-harm, uh, and I, I do talk from experience on this, um, I would cover it up. So another thing to look for is if somebody who normally wears shorts, you know, they come to say, you know, mid thigh or short sleeve shirts is now all of a sudden in warm weather wearing long sleeve clothes or long pants um, and it's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> Those are things, you know, that might get yeah, drastic difference. Yeah, yeah. Might make you go, hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. not like you're going to then go up to them and what's going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah <exactly. laughs> no, no, no. Hey. But then it goes along with other things to, okay, what am I going to now? Am I going to just notice different, you know, other behaviors or am I going to look more not notice because then you might, this might be edited, but then you might, um, be looking for things that aren't there. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that uh, that's a, a big thing looking for things that are, aren't there um, but I know when I was severely struggling and uh, before my attempt um, I was very reclusive mm -hmm. I was so stuck inside my own mind that I, I couldn't I couldn't tell anybody mm -hmm. anything um, because I had that thought Oh, well, they're not going to miss me anyway. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, so we have to, one of the things is that stigmatism of people are stuck inside their minds sometimes. And if they're reaching out, we need to give them that hand because they're reaching out somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And just to kind of add to what everything you're saying is, uh, if somebody is having a bad day, <laughs> That's different than having multiple bad days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We all have a down day. All right. So if your friend is having a down day, doesn't mean you have to have an intervention. Yeah. But you know, if you see, okay, there's a new, there's a consistent pattern here. This is not like them. Okay. I need to talk to them. And, and, and again, don't look for stuff that's not there. They may not open to you up in that moment. I'm, I'm going to guess, but that consistency of being there. And, hey, you okay? I, I'm worried about you. You're not yourself. 
you know, and hopefully that's what we get through. So we have talked about the do's and the don'ts for the things to look for and recognize. The next question is though, how do we break through the mask that people will put on to hide what's really happening and what they're really struggling with? You know, how do we approach it without being accusing of, of them because we don't want to read into something that's not there. But at the same time, we're noticing some out of the ordinary or strange behavioral changes that are not like them, that are outside of that normal that we're used to seeing in their life. So how do we determine if they are masking struggles, what they're going through? I think it would depend on how close a relationship you got with the person that you're talking to. If if you don't think you're close enough to that person, ask somebody that you know that is close to that person. Ask them to, to bring it up to them so that way you can let somebody else know that you, you've noticed something in that person. Yeah. And then hopefully they can reach through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ask somebody that's close that you're concerned. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, you know, everything is okay. Yeah. And hopefully at that point, even sometimes we miss the cues yeah right. mm -hmm. but when someone mentions them we're like you know you're right so right you know. it's mm -hmm. it's very easy when you're close to somebody to sometimes miss those very obvious right cues yeah yeah, yeah I'm, i miss breeze and i after getting the training and i'm learning what somebody is going through when they are having some type of mental issue like Brianna was sleeping more but so I was just thinking that she just just staying more to herself and but now I know that's a sign it's when she was closing up and sleeping more and, and having stomach pain and just it's just some odd pains that were just couldn't I couldn't make sense of it and so I learned later that that's it's physically hurts when it gets your mental health gets that bad it physically hurts and I never knew that before because I had never experienced it. So, is that is that like a stress anxiety kind of thing? I think that's what it is. Um, because from what I've learned, that that's what it is, and that's why they usually that's why they self harm. They either can't feel things because of the way social media has now made everything so blasé or whatever you want to call it that. That's one of the things when we we're talking with certain counselors that that's their way to feel something. That's why they cut themselves or whatever so they can actually feel pain if they can't feel emotional pain because everything's just been desensitized mm -hmm. with media, social media, everything. So um, it's just something I didn't didn't ever thought of. Being a guy, I've never I've always been an outdoorsman and stuff like that. I just never thought about it. Never. No. Uh, I think if you're not necessarily close to the person or, you know, or if you are and you're just that person that they have at the moment and there's no one really around you to grasp for, the biggest, you know, thing that people have told me that helps is just someone to stay calm with them, stay with them. You know, don't leave someone alone that, you know, has had feelings of, you know, being suicidal. They've actually said that, you know, they are suicidal or they have, you know, attempted suicide or, you know, especially if they have a method, you know, if they've thought of that, that you need to really call 911 right away, you know, get them to a nearest ER or something. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're just talking with someone and you're trying to kind of like, you know, get to know the situation and try to understand them, I, I, I just think being calm and just really taking the time as we expressed today, just being with them in that moment, you know, having no distractions, you know, whether that be, uh, you know, you and this person in a park by yourself or, you know, just away from people, definitely having phones away unless you need that, like, like Heather said earlier. I just think it's being with them and listening, you know, really, really listening. Don't just nod, don't just, you know, say, oh, it'll be okay. Or, you know, you're losing your mind, whatever, you know, really, really listen. And even though if you can't connect with their story, you know, cause uh, uh, me personally, I'll just kind of speak from my experience of having the training, but never really, being in that frame of mind of having that, you know, depressed, you know, kind of suicidal thoughts. I've, I've never been like that.
But doing this training and being a part of Brianna's ride has really taught me to just be in that moment with them. Even though I don't know what they're going through and I don't possibly know the struggle, but I want to listen and I want to engage enough to where they feel connected enough to talk to me. And if they're not connecting with me or they you know, feel that they can tell me another resource that's better, I can then connect them to that person. You know, like Mackenzie said earlier, we're not all made to do one thing. You know, there's a lot of things we can't do, but that's what's great about Brianna's Ride and different social networks. You know, different people in our community do help out with suicide prevention and mental health, and that's what's great, is that we actually have those connections to reach out. So, you know, it's not just you have to fix it all. You know, we, we really aren't made to do that, but, you know, just being there and listening to them, uh, you know, if they open up, I, I, I actually know, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that come to me because I like to talk, obviously, and I'm, I'm a social person. But a lot, a lot of the conversations are tough, you know, especially because I don't quite understand it for me. And I'm, I'm not, you know, kind of on that level, but I believe it or not, I actually do listen to them. You know, you know, as much as I like to talk, I'm really learning to listen and try mm -hmm. to engage and, you know, try to kind of see them at their level. And, you know, even though in my mind it may not seem like a big deal, that really doesn't matter. You know, it, you know, they think it matters. So it matters, yeah. you know, and you, you just need to really resonate with them. And please just, if they're really struggling uh, and they're really on the verge of, you know, uh, maybe having those thoughts or taking their life, do not leave them alone. Uh, whether you got to call a parent, whether you, you got to call 911, whether they want to let you call 988, whatever it is, don't leave them. Uh, you know, because they are reaching out for a reason. So it, uh, that's just what I found in the years that I've done it. And a lot of situations have been a little awkward for me, you know, just because I don't have that frame of mind. But just, just listening, and you'll be amazed at what, you know, kind of, you know, you could do for someone just by being there. Yeah. You don't have to understand. You don't have to, you know, be, have gone through it. You know, you don't, you don't have to. You just have to be there. You just have to let them know you're there and engage with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, next time you see them, let them know you paid attention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What we always have to remember is that if it's important to them, it's important. Yeah. And uh, uh, going along with, you know, with Heather just said, you know, about listening and kind of, you know, if you see them, Know, try to remember something that you know you know hey how are you doing I, I I actually follow up with a lot of people you know especially if they text me or they reach out via phone or whatever or if it's social media every so many you know days weeks whatever it is I will reach out to them you know and that really makes them feel good and they're like wow you know you really do care it's been three or four months and you still ask how I'm doing you know so it really is the little things uh, and be kind you know be kind is a big one use their first name mm -hmm. yes use their first name mm -hmm. that in the business setting you know one of the things that i used to teach was you know when it came down to business you use somebody's first name you've got them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this shows that you care mm -hmm. but when you use it in a mental health terms that changes the whole perspective that is like okay you you're one-on-one -on -one, you're talking to the person you're making eye contact and you use their first name come back a few months later and use their first name again okay that's made an impression on the person i know that'll make an impression on me at least mm -hmm. right. um it is very key and that shows that that you are attempting to care that you are there that you that that, that interaction between you two have got to the point where you're using the first name not just hey hi it's you know whatever you're from you know, heather when you're talking directly to somebody that's just, that's something different about that. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, I have, used to have problems remembering names, and so I would associate. Well, I have a famous neighborhood. I have Neil Armstrong <laughs> next door. <laughs> yes. Sharon Stone is married to um, Randy Quaid. <laughs> And Sharon Stone, by the way, is about 80 years old. <laughs> and she loves to be referred to as Sharon Stone. She, she had had several back surgeries. And I was helping her um, by cutting her lawn. Uh, and she was not feeling very well. And, and I do know her last name, by the way. 
but um, she gets such a kick out of being referred to as Sharon Stone. And so as we were sitting down in her living room and and I said, oh, you're looking magnificent. You know, I love this new haircut, Sharon. And and I, uh, I put in the Sharon Stone part and she just giggled and giggled and giggled. But by association, you know, bringing that, what, however you do it, I was able to remember and, and then I passed them and one of the local kids says, how do you know everybody's name? You know, I said, ah, yes, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> but it does help and it helped me when she wasn't feeling well after back surgery and because sometimes I'll just get a blip. Who am I talking to? Oh yes, Neil Armstrong. Story in my life. <laughs> you know. Yes, it is a story of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the name it does help. Yes. So the next question is, what would you, or what would be your recommendations, on asking someone or approaching someone who is struggling? That is more of an acquaintance rather than a close friend or someone we have an established relationship with. We tend to feel more comfortable around people that we know, but should we our approach be different when we are clearly seeing the signs with someone we don't have an established relationship with? I, no, I think the approach should be the same. Yeah, I, um, yeah go ahead, Wayne. Yeah, I, you, you gotta ask the tough question, I mean, whether it's you're close to them or or not close. I think you, in in a lot of our training, they tell you you, you got to be right up front with it. You got to because yeah. if they are really struggling and if they have plans or anything, it, you have to ask them direct. And okay. it's a I don't think you treat treat them any different. And I know when you know going through the struggle, um, people would never ask you directly. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. like, well, you're they're afraid yeah. you're gonna yeah, you know what you're gonna say or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know. That was my biggest thing is that nobody would ask me directly, mm -hmm. you know, and that's and I think that's the key. You yeah. have to be direct sometimes. Yeah, there's a, been a, a lot of change since when you and I were growing yeah. up. Oh, yeah, I grew up in the 80s, 70s, and 80s, and it was a not talked about. Mm -hmm. no. it, it's still not talked yeah. about. I it, mean, it's, it's still not it's, as much. It's out there. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, my thing is the stigmatism in, in a church setting. You know, faith or pray more, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, that's the thing. It has to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our, about our church right now is, like I have to speak uh, March 10th at our church again. And this will be the third year. Yeah. And we have yeah. an average about... 500 per service um, it, it has to be addressed yeah. because you know I, I know in the opening you were talking about you know the star athlete well if they break their leg they're not you know oh pray about it or have more faith or <laughs> go to a doctor well it's the same thing with the mental health portion yeah. of this yeah. Yeah. You know, go to a, a therapist, go to a doctor. I'm sorry, I get fired up about yeah. all this. Yeah. No, that's no. Well, yeah. you watch yeah. those, some of the TV shows where back in the old days where you would get the um, play would come to, we need to pray. Prayer isn't going to get rid of this this disease that's running through your, mm -hmm. your, your, your towns, you know, changing your water system is. Um, doing something different. How do we do something different? Right. We need to make a plan. We need to take action. This is how we do it. Right. You know, you asked about um, do we ask differently for do do we ask the question for different people? Uh, just after I'd taken the training uh, for assist, which is a little more in depth than safe talk, both were equally well, not equally. Both gave me a lot of information and prepared me um my the first person that came to me was uh a friend of my daughter's and uh i asked the question straight up you know is this we, we talked and i said do you have a plan because she wasn't talking along the lines of having a plan so i wasn't at my my flags were not being alerted as much. But I asked her straight up, do you have a plan? Is this something that you're, are you 
thinking about suicide. I didn't omit that word. Right. Do you have a plan for what? Do you have a plan to go to the store? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know. Are you thinking about suicide? Are you thinking, you know, that you need to use that word too? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's, um, the, the word, we have tabooed it as a society. Mm -hmm. yep. And yeah. I think that uh, we need to untaboo it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. Exactly. The next person mm -hmm. was the harder person for me to use it on when, I, when it came to the training. It was very hard because it was my child mm -hmm. came to me in crisis. And it was a little different mm -hmm. to sit there across from my yeah. child and, and maintain a calm, um, you, you know, uh, but I was engaging. And I ended up using the, the 988 number because I needed to put her in touch with somebody that had more training than myself, and I knew that. I would think we could get to the place where we are too emotionally involved. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 So it might be having a third party. Kenzie, you look like you had something to add. I just... You know, not being afraid to, to ask those pointed questions because you have to, but realizing sometimes you have to break the ice with the person. If it is a stranger that you're having a conversation with, but you know that you want to reach out, you can use icebreakers to break in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you know, I saw that you went out last weekend and did this. How was that? And then that takes you into asking them, how are they? And then you can ask those more direct questions. So, you know, whether it is somebody you're close with or not, you can still break that ice and, and get into that conversation, but at the end of the day, you have to ask the direct questions. Yeah. Is it a helpful thing to ask them or mention, you know, I know we're not close, I know we're not tight like that, but I'm I'm really worried about you. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 You know. definitely. Okay. It shows that you you care. Yeah. yeah. It shows that you're thinking about them. It shows that you've noticed yeah. something. Yeah. That, so and that's yeah. half the battle, I believe, is yes. that that people sometimes I know for my case at least, you know, stuck in my head, you know, half the battle is somebody knowing and seeing yeah. that and yeah. addressing that with me. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that was that was a big one. Yeah. That would have been a big one. Yep, like you said. You didn't think that you know yeah. anybody was paying attention, nobody will care, nobody's noticing this, you know. If, if you hear the words, I'm fine, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm only bringing that up from a, you know, I, I've i had someone come to me that said, oh yeah, I'm fine. It's an entire, yeah. yes, and it's been proven to be one of the most used words when someone is actually not okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it maybe not in, in the suicidal thought realm, but in They're the married realm, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, so the married realm, too, but I'm just hearing the words, I'm fine, in terms of, of mental health and their well-being, there's usually more there. Yes. So, oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Pay attention to that and don't take that as a societal norm of, oh, I'm fine, and continue walking. That's usually not, not the way to approach that. Yep. Now, we have already mentioned what we need to start with. One, are you having suicidal thoughts? Two is, do you have a plan? But are there any other questions that we should ask if we are concerned for their safety? Very pointedly ask, if, if you are concerned for someone's safety and you have asked if they have a, a, sui a plan, um, does this plan contain, involve certain methods? Right. Mm -hmm. um, do they have the means in their home? Do they have firearms? Right. Do they have um, certain medications in their home? Yes. If you're going to take the time to ask if they have a plan, then follow that up with, do they have the means mm -hmm. to follow that plan out? Yes. Good. Right. Yeah, yeah, keep them safe. I think at that point, if they have said they're suicidal and they do have a method and there is means, you know, at that moment, they they definitely need to go to the nearest ER, you know, make sure that they're not alone. If, you know, they're talking to you on the phone and that's all you have, stay with them till someone can arrive. You know, text someone, you know, whatever you got to do, 
you know, it's like the conversation I had earlier. I, I, I just put them on speaker and, you know, called the 1-800 number. It may not be that easy, but, you know, ask them, you know, because it's obvious they're reaching out for help. But the biggest thing is, is if, you know, they're at that point that they, they need help right now. You know, and uh, it's it's really that serious, you know, at that moment. It isn't just a, oh, okay, and leave. No, you really need to make sure you're staying with them and make sure they get the professional help they need. The checklist, um, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also make, uh, help them make a plan to keep their mental health good yes. after the fact. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can't just be there to help them at the beginning. You got to mm -hmm. follow through with it. You got to make sure they have a plan to, to, to further their well-being. Right. Um, is really Stay safe. Yeah. So if the system fails and they need to know that there are people that will help them through this and try to help them find the right resources, sometimes insurance doesn't cover it or doesn't cover everything that is needed. We need to follow up with them. We need to try to help them make a plan and then try to follow up with them to see if they are following through on that plan. Yeah, because there, there is not a lot of places out there for people. The number one reason is it's not a money maker. Mm -hmm. So you won't find a whole lot of help out there unless you volunteers um, and then certain programs. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad thing to say, but it's uh, the insurance companies and our politicians, they talk about it, but they don't really do anything about it. No, they don't. No. But having your resource list available um, with you when you go into a, a situation, I keep it on my phone, even though I said, keep your phone over here, I said, keep it over here. Mm -hmm. I have my resource list on my phone with the available contacts, all of the resources in my area, the, if I need to contact them, you know, any um, Women's Resource Center, um, community mental health, uh, right. domestic abuse, right. uh, those numbers, they're all in my phone because I'm not going to remember them, right? Um, and there's, there's over 30 numbers that I have in my phone, and I know that all the other communities have those resources available to them as well. So having that with you when, when you have a conversation, you know, for you, is, is a good thing to have in your arsenal. And I think that the final thing I'll say on that is not being afraid to, to say, you know, I care mm -hmm. and I think it's time that we get help. And that opens the door. Maybe it is pulling out your phone and, and reaching out to the resource, but sometimes you, know, you have their attention so deeply that just saying the words, you know, I care and I think it's time that we reach out to help. I'm going to be there with you every step of the way. But, you know, I need, like, saying that you're at your limits, like, you shouldn't be ashamed of that, you know. I, yeah. I cannot help you any further other than being here for you, but I think it's time that we reach out further. And then, you know, that makes them feel a little more safe in, in the space that they're at to reach out for that help. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I think the key word in that is we. We journey with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that'll help with the name and help with showing them that we care. I mean, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. We always need to maintain our safety in, in yeah. this in this as well because there is that sometimes that point. Yeah. One of the things I try to stress with people is that you can't give something to someone that you don't have. You can't pour into somebody else's life with an empty cup. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can't help someone if you're emotionally on E yourself and if I have poured everything into them and given them all that I can to help at that point I need to make sure I step back and get myself refreshed refilled strengthened or I could find myself struggling with these things or struggling in my life. You know, as a pastor, I come at this from a perspective of faith. I believe in the power of prayer. And I believe in, in the word of God and the strength that I can find there. But it can't be 
just that. Because sometimes it doesn't matter how much I pray or how much I read the Word of God. If, you know, my physical health is poor, I'm going to struggle. If my mental health is poor, I'm going to struggle. You know, one doesn't make up for the other. They all work together, and it's important to understand that we need to make time for ourselves as well. Uh, Wayne and I have had situations where we have been concerned with people that, you know, either left where they were and, you know, they were on a, a, a motor vehicle or, you know, driving and they were not in the right mental state. And we were very concerned. I honestly have had to call 911 on a few friends. Uh, I'll admit there was one that was not happy with me at the time, but they honestly did thank me afterwards um, because, you know, they are still here. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, there is a lot of people, I, I, I wouldn't say, you know, take drastic measures every time, but, you know, if someone's really saying, okay, I'm suicidal, I'm going to take my life, I don't care, I don't care, and they're driving and they're not in a safe place because, you know, really they're not because yeah. they are not in a safe place for themselves, <clears throat> but all those innocent people around them too. We, we really had, you know, two experiences the last couple of years, you know, with, with good friends of ours that really needed help. And I honestly knew that they probably wouldn't like it, but at that moment it was their safety that was most important. You know, it was them, it was keeping them here. Yeah. Uh, they, they honestly couldn't see it at the time, but we did. And so I'm, I'm not saying every situation deserves that, but if you're really concerned with someone, it really is okay to call 911 and make a wellness check on someone, mm -hmm. you know, if they're by themselves. And they've actually said, yes, I've you know, got methods here right next to me and I'm gonna use them. Call 911, you know, get you know, professional people, police officers to the residents. That's okay. I, I mean, you know, it really has to be a crucial point to that point, yeah. but it's really okay to reach out, you know, to a higher, you know, person like a police officer, you know, call. I, I, I just think it's really important. I, I personally probably had to do that four times since we've been doing Brianna's Ride and it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. But the one thing that keeps me going is I honestly know that person will be okay if I do it. And that's what you need to focus on is their safety, so. You also need to focus on your safety at that point as well. Exactly. Yeah. Because a wellness check is um, also for your well-being too. You're, you're doing it for them, but um, we yeah. had just had a situation this past week where um, that was something I, I almost had to do. Um, and it was for our safety as well. We didn't know what we might be going into. And it's not my job to put myself in in harm's way. Um, I'm not trained to do right. that. It's right. someone else's job to do that. So that's that was the option, you know, the other option. Right. So if you ever feel that your safety is, you know, in jeopardy, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, not just for theirs. Right. It's good. Last question today. We've already covered the question of should we listen more than we talk, which we have determined is a resounding yes. I wanted to wrap this up today with mentioning a phrase that Jessica has said to me in our conversations. And it seems to be a part of what Brianna's ride is all about. It's okay to not be okay. And hopefully this will help people to understand that we are not geared and equipped to handle everything. It doesn't matter how strong we are or how strong we think we are. We can't handle everything. And so if you're having a hard time handling something, that's okay. You might just need a friend to talk to. You just might need to sit down with someone and talk and just you know, be able to share what you're feeling. But you know what, if you need something more than that, if you need to see a, a therapist, if you need to talk to a counselor, if you, you know, whatever it might be, if you need to talk to your doctor about what's happening or what's going on, that's okay. And is there anything else that anyone else wants to share today? Well, 
I think going along those lines, you know, it's just fair to say that everybody struggles. <clears throat> you know, yeah, I might not have those depressing thoughts or suicidal thoughts and be in that place, but it doesn't mean that I haven't struggled with things. You know, it doesn't mean that I, I don't have anxiety now and then. You know, I, everybody struggles. And that's why it's really okay to reach out and it's okay to not be okay. We, we honestly have our bad days, but you know, when it's more than just a bad day and it's really taken, you know, kind of over your life, that's when it's really okay to reach out, you know, cause you really are worth it. And you have, you have a purpose. That's why you're here. So it's important to stay and, you know, just know you're not alone. I mean, that's, that's basically the other key of Brianna's ride is you really are not alone. We're all, you know, trying to help each other out. We're trying to get day to day. We all struggle, but you know, in the end, it's just about being kind. It's about no knowing you're loved and you're not alone and you are needed. That's a key word too, is needed. Yeah. You know, cause a lot of people when they're in that mental health state, they don't feel needed, but you really are. So just letting people know that and you know, knowing that you're worth it. And that's what I love about Brianna's ride and everything we do in Brianna's memory. Um, she did have some struggles, but she was also an outgoing girl. Um, it's all right. That's normal. I do that at every ride too, and I always have my point time done in years. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she was an outgoing girl, and they did have a problem. But what I like is about Brianna's rides, we always show hope, yeah. and everybody's human. So, um, that's one of my favorite things about Brandon's ride. That's awesome. I can tell you that um, hope is the key to what mm -hmm. you guys do. Yeah. Um, you know, the saying, you know, it's okay not to be okay, mm -hmm. um, has now become one of my favorite sayings. Yeah. Um, some of the people that I have talked with, you know, I have mentioned it's okay not to be okay. Um, yeah. And even then, through that saying that there's hope there, mm -hmm. it is genuinely hope. And I appreciate so much what you guys have done. Um, and again, it just makes me want to get involved even more. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks. No, they, you're only given one mind and one body, and you have to take care of it. And, you know, not one of us is better than the all of us. Mm -hmm. And, you have to take care of each other and sometimes that's letting your own guard down and don't be ashamed of the fact that everybody has their own struggles just a lot of them might be inward some of them are outward and it's nothing to be afraid of learning more about you know there may be some of you that watch this that have never really thought about the topic and there is a great thing called the internet now that allows you to expand your knowledge and even if you don't know a lot about this topic it doesn't hurt to start learning more wherever you start it's a start and it, it changes the culture hmm. yeah. suffering through mental health issues is not shameful no it's nothing to be ashamed of i've suffered through them through most of my decades hmm. i've learned from them I've battled them over and over again. I've clawed back from them. And I'm grateful for everything that I've had an opportunity to learn from. And I'm grateful for everybody I've encountered and everyone that I've known and met, especially through Brianna's ride that's given me the opportunity to do what I do today. And thank you, Pastor Jeff, for this opportunity as well. I just want to say it's been an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this today. And for anyone out there, you just need to realize there is no such thing as normal. <laughs> and normal is boring anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so. so be you. Be who God created you to be. We are individuals and we're meant to be. We waste so much time comparing ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. Like you have all said, we all have purpose. We are here for a reason. And let's put the focus on that. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. I just need to fulfill my purpose. 
as we're wrapping this up, I just want to say how much I appreciate everyone to here today on your openness and willingness to share your experiences on all that you have learned and all that you have been through to help the rest of us. And also those of you who are watching, we would love for you to share your experiences. You know, and maybe you know some other resources that we haven't listed or mentioned. Please, please put them in the comments. But if you think this, this video series could help somebody, please share it. You know, this isn't about a number of clicks. This is about helping somebody and helping them realize they're not alone and that it's okay to not be okay. So please feel free to share it. Please feel free, you know, to reach out to somebody and say, you know what? Hey, this might, have you, please watch this. Maybe this can help some strengthen you or help you get through something. So thank you to all of you who have joined uh, in this today, but also all of you who have joined and watched this. And I appreciate so much the participation and the, uh, all of the discussion and all of the things that have been brought forth today. Thank you again, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. no.